Hello, I'm Dr. Jeff Kingsley and welcome to another edition of Riding in Cars with Researchers. Today we're going to talk about fair market value. We're going to talk about what it is and why you should care. Specifically, I'm going to try and convince you that it's flawed in how we're, con how we're assessing what fair market value is in clinical research and why that matters, why it hurts. So that's that's your takeaway is why it's flawed and why that hurts, okay? First, fair market value in the rest of the world versus fair market value in healthcare and research. In the rest of the world, fair market value is whatever someone's willing to pay for a company. Um, in the technology space, in private equity, in venture capital, Facebook can decide to pay a billion dollars for some startup company that doesn't even have revenue or has never been profitable and the rest of the world goes well then that's what somebody was willing to pay so that's what fair market value is voila that business is now worth a billion dollars literally I'm not kidding I'm not kidding when Facebook pays a billion the value of that company becomes a billion and the next investors expect the value to be above a billion. And it continues on and on and on. Now, in healthcare, not the case. In healthcare, quite literally, it's illegal against the law to pay anything other than fair market value. Why? Well, it's actually got a, a pretty smart root. The root of that legal precedent is that you should not be able to buy a physician's conscience. If you can pay a physician so much that that person couldn't possibly risk losing their job with you, then in theory you could buy their ethics, you could buy their decision making. That's why, fundamentally why, we have these rules in healthcare that say you can't pay anything other than fair market value, and that's sensible. I, I have no issue with that. That's why it exists. So, what's the definition of fair market value across not just healthcare but real estate, businesses? How do we define fair market value? Fair market value is the amount that a knowledgeable, willing, unpressured buyer would pay to a knowledgeable, willing, unpressured seller in the marketplace. And those terms are important. Knowledgeable, willing, and unpressured. That's how we determine fair market value. Now, how do we determine it in the clinical research space? Well, Largely, the industry uses two leading databases, and there are others, but there are two leading databases. And what they do is they simply aggregate data. They aggregate the data on what all of the investigators across the U.S. have, have agreed upon in previous contract and budget negotiations. Now, that's not bad it's similar to how we get fair market value on real estate right what are the most recent transactions that have taken place in your neighborhood with homes of a similar size it's called comps comparables comparable data and so the industry is collecting data aggregating data on what all other investigators have agreed to in terms of the value of the services rendered the other place that this fair market uh, value data comes from is existing healthcare data, Medicare data, on what physicians are paid for services in standard of care healthcare. Now, let's talk about the errors that are inherent in how we're doing this in clinical research. First would be the errors around these aggregations of data in contract and budget. What are the two things that are contributing to big errors there? Well, you've heard me talk before about Tufts University Center for the Study of Drug Development, CenterWatch, and Ken Getz. They research research and they publish regularly on how we're doing. 
And what have we discussed? 51% of all physicians who get involved in research fail in their first research trial and never go back. Those are called the one and dones. They did one trial and never did a second. And we ask them, why did you never go back? And what they say is they couldn't be profitable. They didn't realize how much work was involved. They didn't realize the regulatory burden. They couldn't choose the correct research trials. Well, what does all that mean? It means they were un knowledgeable. Now remember, the definition of fair market value is the value that a buyer would pay a seller who is knowledgeable, willing, and unpressured. Now, the one and dones are willing and unpressured, but they weren't knowledgeable. They didn't know the actual costs. Well, lo and behold, the one and dones, their data is in those database aggregates of what is determining fair market value. The people that didn't know what they were doing their data has the exact same weight in those databases as the people who did a really outstanding job and truly knew their costs and negotiated aggressively. They're weighted equally, which means that the people that didn't know what they were doing, their data shouldn't be in there in the first place, but their data is holding down the people who did know what they were doing, the people who were knowledgeable. Also, those very same sources publish on how well we do on research, specifically on enrollment. And what do we find again? 11% of all research sites fail to enroll a single patient. Zero, goose egg. And about 40% of sites underperform. There's another 51%. 51% of sites are underperforming and or enrolling no patients whatsoever. That's just the enrollment metric. And you've heard me talk about EQTCS, enrollment, quality, timelines, customer service. Sites are underperforming on all of these metrics, but what do we find out? We find out that despite underperforming, all of those contract and budget metrics are treated equally in the databases, the fair market value databases. Now, if you were going to hire a plumber, your toilet is clogged, and you're gonna hire a plumber. Let's say you knew that this plumber almost always underperforms. This plumber tends not to actually get rid of the clog. This plumber is really not good at customer service. This plumber doesn't adhere to timelines. This plumber takes weeks and weeks to actually arrive to unblock your toilet. EQTCS on plumbing. Would you pay the same for that plumber as opposed to a plumber who would show up promptly, had high quality, had high customer service? They're different fair market values. You'd pay differently for those two plumbers. But in the research world, those are both actually the same. They are weighted the same. Our databases aren't complex enough, aren't sophisticated enough to weigh those two contract and budget negotiations differently. Now, the other point that I made is that there's a lot of fair market value determination that, that derives from healthcare data, from Medicare data in the delivery of standard of care healthcare. Why is that flawed? Well, it's flawed because there's a dramatic difference in the complexity of the work that a physician is doing in standard of care healthcare versus research. I explain to doctors all the time, you're a cardiologist. You get called that you've got a patient in the emergency room with a congestive heart failure exacerbation. Their, their CHF, their congestive heart failure, has just dramatically gotten worse and now they're in the ER. You can walk into the ER and do a history and physical. What are her current medications? Did she take her medications today? Has there been any deviation in her diet? What does her urine output look like? Okay, now let's write some orders. Let's give you some IV Lasix right now. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. We're gonna put you up in a bed. We're gonna make you better rapidly and get you back out of the hospital and back into your own home. You can do it in your sleep. You've done it so much. It's very rote. It's relatively low complexity because it's what you've done ever since your fellowship. Now, very same patient hits the ER in a research trial. Same cardiologist, same patient. You walk into that patient's room, entirely different amount of complexity. Okay, the patient's in a research trial. Let me get the investigator brochure. 
let me relook at the medication that this patient is, is on. Is there any indication that this medication could possibly have contributed to the congestive heart failure? What things can I write for in light of the fact that this patient is currently in a research protocol? Have there been any other adverse events in the research protocol? Entirely different level of complexity because the patient's in a research protocol. Same physician, same patient. Different complexity. There's no reason that what the physician is being compensated for that work in a research trial should have any build upon physician compensation in standard of care healthcare. They're entirely different. There should be a substantial multiple against normal standard of care rates, or there should be an entirely new calculation of what determines fair market value for those services rendered in a research trial. Now, why does it hurt? Why does it matter? Well, it matters because the sites that are trying to be excellent on EQTCS, enrollment, quality, timelines, and customer service, the sites that are trying to invest heavily in infrastructure, their budgets are being held down by the people that didn't know what they're doing and by the fact that some of these values are derived from standard of care values. That means that sites that are trying to invest to perform exceptionally well are being hurt by the current way we calculate what fair market value is. That's why it's a big issue. It's not just that these sites are being paid less, it's that there's a ripple effect. By being paid less, sites can invest less in producing excellent service to the industry and to the world. It's a vicious cycle, and we'll talk about vicious cycles in a bit. So here's my call to action. My call to action is for people to educate themselves on what fair market value is and how it's calculated in the research space. It has big flaws in it. And the reason you should care about these big flaws is because the ripple effect is that sites are handicapped. Sites are handcuffed. It's harder for sites to actually invest in performing better because there's a flaw in how they're paid. That's why it matters. As always, thank you for riding along with me. Fair market value. It's flawed and it hurts and it's preventing sites from, it's handicapping sites from being able to get better. It's not good for our industry. Thank you very much. Follow us on all of these social media channels, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Keep contacting me. I love hearing from you, and I love the value that's being generated from our conversations. This is how we make the industry better. So call to action. Pay attention. Fair market value. Let's fix this paradigm. doesn't make any sense the way it's happening today. Thank you for riding along. I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Take care.